Yeah. Oh, this group looks looks promising. I have a variety yeah, no, here. Can't put it on me. Who is this group? Ours. Ours. Okay, here also we have one no That's DNA it. person. Okay, lane number one is the same. Yeah, okay, lane. Okay, lane. who is lane number four? That be. No, no, lane number five. Lane number five. Me. Jin. Jin, you are uh, negative, yes, negative. And yes, Miriam, no you are the one. You are the variation in this group. You have one alu and no. Uh, so she has a heterozygous uh, phenotype. She's she's A, a capital A, small a. So. <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah, you don't, you do not have it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. You do not have a DNA. Wait, what else? So who's going to go on the witness? I didn't Yes. Can you say it again? You lost your DNA, Madam. You have no DNA. Yeah, what the students are doing here is they're trying to DNA, they're trying to profile their DNA. DNA profiling is a very important technique that's used for identifying people based on like a, like a fingerprinting. So here we are doing like a primitive technique to make them uh, identify or profile their own DNA. We are using a sequence called ALU. It's a transposon present in chromosome 16. So each student has isolated their own DNA and they are profiling their own DNA. So they're going to see whether they belong to this genotype. They're going to actually find their genotypes. And then we are going to see what is the percent of that genotype in our population. So they have, for the step one, they've isolated their DNA. They have PCR their DNA. That means what is PCR, guys? So what do you do by PCR? Amplify DNA. Amplify DNA. Anything else you do? Do you amplify the entire DNA or no. just specific yes. DNA? So they actually amplify the specific DNA that they need to amplify. Then they did that yesterday and today they're running the gel and they have the results now. So that's what they've done. This is the 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 bacteria, the pure bacteria without the transformation and they grow very very well but this doesn't have ampicillin it doesn't have ampicillin or nothing you see it's just the lb it's growing media and it's a growing media so, but the same one but the same one when you put this, but the same yeah. one when you put it in plain lb it did not grow at all yeah. because it doesn't have resistance yeah because you see here they have the ampicillin so could they you have some by chance being transformed or not? Yeah, we could have it. Did we have it or not? No, no, no we did because not have it's it. blanket. So, so that shows our, 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 our you've done the experiment correctly. So yeah. there's, no, there's no contamination. Yeah, this they show exactly like this. We show the LB work perfectly. So they have the bacteria grow. This is the ampicillin work because no bacteria grow. And on here we have the put the plasmid to transform the bacteria and they make it able to grow in, in the may. And in the last one, we have the arabinose to change the color to, to, to make the fluorescent light work on the, on, the, on the LB. But tell them also why in the presence of arabinose it glows. Because what does arabinose do? It turns on the gene. It it's because it, tri yeah, well, you want to say that? It triggers yeah. the GFP, the fluorescence. Yeah, how does it do that? Because it's, it turns on Don't the... Don't point it at you. Give a little bit more explanation on what it does. We discussed all this at length. Um, I was a science major. I switched over to forensic science. Um, though the science classes here uh, that I've been uh, learning at BMCC are great, you sometimes need a, something a little bit more hands-on. I think this forensic science program is actually a great tool because um, <clears throat> it actually places what we learn in the books to actual application on an everyday pretty much setting. The summer yeah, workshop yeah. is actually the an extension of this forensics, uh, the Science for Forensics course that we have, the collaboration we have with John Jay. Uh, one of the things we are trying to do is when these students go to John Jay, they are they're not only they know the basics, but they know more than the basics. So as an extension, we are teaching them uh, certain techniques that they would be going ahead and using in John Jay, like PCR, the gel electrophoresis, um, the SDS electrophoresis, all these things are something they are going to be doing as forensic scientists. So we are giving them a head start in this uh, summer workshop. We have picked 10 of these forensic students or forensics majors who already finished their bio biology requirement. So we are working with them to give them that, uh, that extra information or that extra knowledge that they need. This course was created um, because 
the school doesn't have the program yet. So we are first creating this summer internship so we can bring more students into interested into the field so we can then be transferred to John Jay. Um, this program is very, very helpful. I learned, I've been learning a lot of different microbiology stuff and we work with DNA samples, we work with fingerprints, like we are like simulating how real life in a forensic field is and it's very gratifying. This is this is the intern. Oh, I don't think so. They just took it out of the. And what oh, what they can have is they can have a 600 band, or they can have a 900 yeah. band, or they can. Have, I mean, you know, if both the chromosomes have, do not have the alu, they have the 600. If both of them have the alu, they have the 900. If if they have one has 600, when I mean, one has alu and one doesn't have, they have the 900 and 600. Mm -hmm. So this will be small a small a. This will be capital a capital a. This will be capital a small a. So both of them are small a, small a in this group. Mm -hmm. All right, who's ready for the next DNA? Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, definitely important for the students that go into forensics because they think they would like to do forensics. They saw these shows on TV that look terrific and they get to have a little bit of a hands-on experience uh, of what a forensic science would do as in techniques they would use and look at scenarios in which those techniques apply they try to learn how to solve a case. In, of course, it's not a real case, and we're happy it's not. But um, they learn to they learn to use essential techniques they will use uh, later on. It's an incredible opportunity for them. If they go, if they would go, if they go straight through a, a full-on forensics program, they wouldn't see any of these for years to come. They would see chemistry, biology, more physics, more chemistry, more calculus. But they wouldn't get to do any of the fun part of. Uh, analyzing DNA, of uh, doing their fingerprinting, of learning palynology as a forensic tool or learning or, or um, replicating DNA that they can take a piece of DNA from um, anywhere on a crime scene or a, or, or a questionable case and replicate portions of it and try to identify the, the, pe the, the, the people through that. So it, it is incredibly interesting in that point and they're learning valuable techniques. Okay, we again have only AA here and two people are missing DNA and I think you lost my DNA. You are. I am the there. You I'm in the, the last lane. lane. So, right. see, you lost my DNA again. Oh, shucks. Wilson, your eye on But you know what? I shouldn't be mad at you. I should be mad at Andre. He processed my DNA. He lost his DNA and he lost my DNA too. Positive, plus <laughs> minus. All right, who is number, um, number five? five is is the first number, yeah, number five is David. David, yours? David you are Mine. negative, negative. Because you don't have no alu. And who is number seven? Miriam. That's me. Uh, Wilson. Like the oh, no, no, Wilson is number seven. I don't have anything. You don't have DNA, and Wilson is negative, negative. I am negative, negative. How come all the girls have no DNA? What's going on in this lab? All the ladies have no DNA. <laughs> well, it's, I joined the military in, two, in June 2004, and I got out about approximately a year ago. I applied for, to many schools, and BMCC was one of the few that accepted me. At the time, I only wanted a liberal arts degree because I, I wanted a, I'm pursuing a career in law enforcement. But once the opportunity came to switch into forensic science, I jumped on it, and that's how I ended up here. Because I believe that forensics and law enforcement, it's huge. So it marries two of my loves, which is science and law enforcement. I get the best of both worlds. The, the whole idea of this workshop is we don't, want, we don't want them to be technicians. We want them to be scientists. We want them to know what they are doing and not, not only how, not to know how, but they should know what it is and if, if there's a problem, can they troubleshoot. So that's the whole idea behind this workshop. So it's just not technique based. It's also like they have to understand the technique. They build paper models so they know how they're working before they actually do the experiment. When I started, when I, a friend of mine in, in, came to me and she told me there was an internship, a summer internship, and I came and signed up for it. And I didn't know it was a forensic science, but as I came to class, the first day of class, I found it was a forensic science class. But as we, we started doing the experiments, it was interesting because I'm, gonna, I'm going into pharmacy. And so this is more of a, like a, a hands-on work 
to get more experience and experiments because I'm gonna be mixing and doing drugs in, in drugs so I wanted the experience and so far I've, I've I know how to isolate DNA from fruits I know how to do I amplify my DNA uh, meaning I have to take one little sample and make it into like several molecules of DNA so I've learned a lot I'm learning a lot and it's interesting it's fun the teachers are great and the students so I'm, it's interesting